Tonight on Ghoul World Order, it's a tribute to the legendary Bob Ross. It's the joy of pumpkin slashing with Buzz Ross. So glad you can join me today. We're going to have ourselves some fun here today. I got this nice big pumpkin, and as you can see, he has a nice flat surface, and I drew a perfect scary face on with a magic marker there. This is where he was laying in the pumpkin patch, got all nice and flat. That's just perfect right there for doing a great face for the jack-o'-lantern. Now for this job, as we all know, you'll need a good bucket to put all the pumpkin guts in, a nice long knife for the lobotomy part, and a little sharp knife just for carving out the eyes, nose, the mouth, get that face all carved out. So let's go ahead and let's get ready here. We're going to have ourselves some fun. Yeah. So when you start, I'll always start up at the top here. I don't really have to do much of a uh, any kind of extreme uh, line around here. You just have to just carve gently, go through gently. You don't have to really draw that part out. There we go. Yeah, nice like that. There we go. And just sort of go slow. Don't go too too fast. You don't want to screw the job up. And always remember, when you put the lid back on, just follow the line, it'll fit. I know some people, they all say they have a hard time getting their lid to fit on their jack-o'-lantern. That's because you're supposed to match it up. It's supposed to fit like a key. Some people always make that mistake. I'm not sure why. You know, my little brother, can you believe I have a little brother? We all used to go... Picking pumpkins out of the pumpkin patch. His favorite color, though, was green. He always wanted to pick the green pumpkins. I always had a hard time understanding how come he just has a hell of a time trying to carve those things when they're green like that. <sighs> mm. He was a strange one. Never could get through to him. You can't carve the green ones. They're too raw. They need to get ripe. They need to get up there and age a little bit. A little bit of time here, though. Okay, we're getting there. Always takes a little bit just to make the perfect incision. I always like to call this part the lobotomy. Just carving into that skull to take out the brains, but hard to tell. What do you think? Is it a pumpkin's brains or is it a pumpkin's guts? I don't know. Maybe they think with their stomachs. <laughs> just some food for thought. <laughs> I know that's a bad pun of mine. Yeah, here we go. And yeah, we're just about done here. Okay. There we go. And now for our really fun part. This is definitely my favorite part where we see the insides. I'm going to just take the cranium off. Ah. You always want to cut out those brains or guts. Whatever it is on the top of the cranium, you don't want those catching on fire. Uh, look at all those seeds hanging. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now you can uh, roast these seeds. Uh, you know, you can make uh, some roasted pumpkin seeds to munch on, or you can do something even more fun, plan them for next year. Grow yourself a big pumpkin patch. That way, when you harvest them, you can maybe sell them at a farmer's market. You can roast some of the seeds and eat them, and then you can plant more for next year. You know, a big old pumpkin patch. And that's so much fun. You have your own pumpkin patch like that. There we go. Okay, so we got the cranium right there. And we're just going to set this right down here. Okay, now, another tool you need, I forgot to mention this, is a good spoon. So what we're going to do here, we're going to pull this bastard's guts right out. <laughs> oh boy, would you look at that. All those seeds. Wow, that would be a great pumpkin patch for next year, wouldn't it? Oh, nothing quite like it. There we go. Got some seeds coming here. You know, when I was a kid in my neighborhood, I took a pumpkin, and before I carved it into a jack o' lantern, I painted it solid phthalo blue. And all those neighborhood kids, they kept asking, What kind of a pumpkin is that? And I just told him that's a, 
That's a wild pumpkin. Pre-order official selection. <laughs> they believe me. <laughs> Those kids in my neighborhood, <laughs> they just were not bright. Oh, they were dumber than a bag of Charlie Brown rocks. <laughs> I always have so much fun getting them to believe anything, especially during Halloween. <laughs> so this part here always takes a little while, but that's the fun part. Just scrape all those guts, scrape all those seeds. Wow. Yeah, nice, good space there, you know. And you can grow a big old jack lantern patch. Big old pumpkin patch for potential jack lanterns. We'll make some apple pie. And remember, too, this is your uh, medical experiment, your surgical procedure. You know, you don't have to make the face look exactly like mine looks. It's your experiment, and in your experiment, you can do anything y'all want. And I mean anything. This is your victim. You'll hack him up however you want. Oh, boy. Yeah, this takes a little while, though, because they really kind of stick in. Regardless. It doesn't take too, too long. It's the fun of doing it. It's the joy of doing it, you know? Just the joy of being able to spend some time doing this during Halloween. Do it with your family, do it with your kids. You know, you know come to think of it, the ancient Celts. You know, they used to actually carve out of, out of a turnip above all things. They must have had arthritis in their wrists. Technically, they weren't the Celts, though. They were the ancient Gales. The Celts were uh, from the mainland. It's a little tricky, but the ancient Irish and the Gales, they were celebrating Samhain. They used turnips. Strongest wrist in the world, I'll bet. But man, I wonder what they passed off as medical insurance back then. I'll bet they hurt their wrists pretty bad. Yeah. So, once we get this all done here, we're going to go right ahead. We're going to put that face on. In fact, I'll tell you what you could do. If it is taking a while, and you're really, really, really trying to get all those pumpkin guts out, here's a quick, easy thing you can do. Just use your bare hands. Yeah, nice and slimy. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're a zombie in a George Romero film. Or on The Walking Dead. You always go for the guts. Well, in Return of the Living Dead, that's when they want the brains. Boy. Oh, man, don't you just love the smell of the inside of a jack-o'-lantern? Raw guts, when you start cooking it, oh, it's great. None smells quite like a burning jack o' lantern. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to get creative with Halloween. Get creative with your costumes and get creative with your jack o' lantern. Uh, yeah. You know, I'll tell you a funny story pertaining to pumpkins. An aunt of mine. She is priding herself on her homemade pumpkin pie mix for Thanksgiving. And I was invited up and I just didn't want to be there, so I took some of that pumpkin pie mix and I put it right on the edge of my boot. I was walking around with my shoes on her house Thanksgiving day and she asked me, Hey, what's on your shoe? I scooped it up with my finger. I took a bite out and I asked, Did that dog shit in the house again? Well, needless to say, I didn't have to attend that Thanksgiving party I didn't want to attend. Got me out of there quick. <laughs> All the fun things you could do in October, even in November. Dia de los Muertos, Guy Fox Day. Don't quit just because November 1st here. Nah, extend it out. Extend it out a little bit. Enjoy it, make it last. That's what you gotta do. Now, I always like to try to get as much of these seeds out as possible. Try to get a big old pumpkin patch going. There's always going to be a few excess in there. It's always a little hard to 
try to get it all out. Now, we're getting to the, down to the nitty gritty here. It's time to let my hand off and let's get batshit crazy. Let's go insane now. Okay. I'm always a slimy mess. That's so fun though. Ah. This is one of my favorite, and I do mean favorite, October activities. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna start here. Start with, let's go ahead and we're going to start making an incision here around the eye. So we're going to go right ahead and just follow the line, follow the contour. Just like, just like connect the dots. Just like using tracing paper. And don't be afraid to go a little slow. Just get all those little indications just accurate. And remember, if you do go a little out of the line, it's okay. It's okay. Perfectly fine to go just a little out of the lines. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try using my left hand right here because my uh, right hand's all slimy with pumpkin guts. Oh yes. We wanna get this eye here carved out. Remember, I'm left hand. When you're left-handed, it's easy. When you're right-handed, don't be afraid. You know, if you're giving it a shot, go a little slow. It might be a fun challenge. You know, carve it left-handed if you're right-handed, right-handed if you're left-handed. You're one of those uh, abracadabra people, though. No, no, that's cheating. You can do it either way. There we go. We got one eye just about carved out. Let's make sure it's all done. There. Don't be afraid, you know, you have to pull it out slow. Sometimes you have to go a little slow. You don't want to screw it up. Just go nice, nice and slow. There we go. Yeah. Just go eat nice and slow. You could use a spoon for this too if you think it's necessary. Usually I always try to gouge your eyeballs out with a knife. Try to gouge everything out with a knife, really. And if necessary, what you could do, here's another little trick. Just cut a little slit straight down, but go slow. Whatever you do, go nice and slow. This way, it's, it should be a little easier to wedge that out. There we go. See, it's coming out a little easier now. There we go. It's starting to come out nicely. Just a little easy. And you can also push out a little bit from the inside. Go easy though. Don't want to bust up what you got. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now he's got something he can see with. Right in the works there. Something developing. Oh boy. Ah, there we go. And we'll see if we can push a little bit of that in if we can. This is about a nice thick rind to it. I just put in there in the bucket with the seeds. Now remember, okay, when you dispose of jack-o'-lanterns, you know, they rot easily. You just take out the tea light you put in. You can leave them under a tree just to uh, you know, let the deer eat them. Yeah, maybe some other animals may come and peck at it. They like them. It is, after all, fruit. Okay, I'm going to start here on his other eyeball. <laughs> he looks a little like Odin, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, we're going to go right ahead on this. Start in this corner. My hand's getting nice and dry now. So, always go slow. You're not in a rush. Not in any kind of rush at all. Take your time. After all, it's October. Nice, cool, crisp weather. It's good to slow down a bit, you know. Slow down, even when you're carving a jack lantern. Don't be in such a rush. Everybody wants to rush the last three months of the year, get it over with. They want to skip over Thanksgiving and jump right into Christmas here in the United States. Slow down. Chill. 
It's the last three months. Let's enjoy it. Here we go. A little bit at a time. So, <laughs> had to keep on uh, checking the clock. Gotta make sure you're doing it out of the time. Make sure we don't overdo it. Of course, we're on YouTube. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? We're going to go real slow, aren't we? Take all the time we want. I'm going to cut a little triangle out just to get this uh, eyeball out. And we're going to that'll make it there. That's making it nice and easy. Go nice and slow. I'm always trying to do it nice and slow. There we go, making a little bit of progress. Yeah. So, comment below. Tell us some of your favorite uh, memories carving jack o' lanterns. Yo, come and uh, comment in our community section on YouTube, or tell us about in space. Hey, you know, she hell even show us on Facebook. You know, tell us and show us what your favorite uh, jack o' lantern experiments were. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. I always love seeing people's artwork. You know, did you ever win a? Jack Laren contest. Come on to our community page here on YouTube and tell us all about it. Oh yeah, tell us about winning your first prize, you know, or upload the pictures. We're just eager to hear all about that. But yeah, there's nothing quite like this though. Definitely one of my favorite Halloween traditions. That going to hear some live music. Let's not forget the horror movies. <laughs> Can't do without them horror movies. Okay, now we're gonna start here on his nose. Yeah, so we got a nice uh, shape for the nose here. We want nostrils in this one. Go nice and slow. That's sort of the key to it. You gotta go not too fast, but nice and slow so you can get the incision just right. I'm gonna turn on an angle here a little bit just to try to get that out. So, if you uh, do grow uh, your own pumpkins and uh, you're a fan of tell us about it. How to, you know, show us a picture of your pumpkin patch too. We'd love to see that. You know, it's our favorite time of the year here on Ghoul World Order. You know, we like to make it fun. Fun times, fun times. Okay. We're getting the nose here starting to cut out. Okay. The nose might be a little tricky. You gotta try to go slow, yes. As usual, just the eyes, but it's a little more tedious because it's a smaller area. So if you have to, don't hesitate to slow it down just a little slower. Just a little. You gotta slow down just for precision when the you're carving the nose because sometimes the noses are a little smaller than the eyes on jack-o'-lanterns. Go ahead and do it. You know, it doesn't matter if you have to slow down a little. Take your time. You know, you're slashing this bastard up. Have a good old time. You know, you know, some people might make their noses about the same size as the eyes. Especially if it's just a standard triangular shaped nose and eyes. You know, the traditional style. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we all like to be a little creative and it might require for the nose to be a little smaller. Of course, I also like to make the mouth real big. See a lot of sunlight in there. Sunlight? <laughs> Who am I kidding? Candlelight. Of course, though, Samhain was a solar, har a solar uh, festival. Solar holiday. On the solar calendar. The end of summer. New Year's Eve for the uh, ancient Irish. November 1st is their New Year's Day. Solemn means November. In fact, I believe we covered that here on this show once. So definitely, uh, if you're uh, doing it by uh, using a magic marker, feel free when you're doing it this way. It gives you more control over the mouth. It makes it nice and big without making it too wide. Mouths are sometimes a little difficult. That's why a magic marker will help give you the right precision. Get it the right size. I'm just hauling that out a little bit. There we go. Okay. And 
going to try to pull a little bit out that way. There we go. I don't want to get too much in the camera there. I want to just see how it's going. Okay. And now we're going to start here on the mouth. Here's where the most of the light source comes from. Oh boy. We're going to ward off some malevolent spirits with this badass. We'll let the good ones in, but tell the bad ones get the hell out of here. Oh yeah. Some people get so desperate for Halloween, they actually carve watermelons in the summertime. I can't blame them. Just gets the damn boring waiting for it, doesn't it? Halloween is more like a lifestyle, isn't it? It's something you just sort of live. It's not something that just over after October 31st. It's a lifestyle. It's just a mindset. It's something you do freely. It just feels right. <laughs> yeah. Now the teeth here. He has sharp little teeth. So it's going to be a little tedious. The mouth will take a little while. So, when you give him little teeth like I gave him, you know, you just got to take your time, you know. Go nice and slow. Just slight little incisions at a time. Just, just a few little, in, just a few little incisions. They're not big gashes, not big slashes, just little slices at a time. Little incisions. Takes a little bit of time, you know. A little bit of a style to it, a little bit of a technique. Just the right little incision at the right place. As you can see here, we're almost done with the upper level of teeth. Now, for those of you who've never carved a jack o' lantern before, oh, I don't know how you uh, never got around to doing this. Shame, you're going to want to do it soon. So what we're going to do here, now we're just at the edge of the mouth. We can go here a little, maybe a little bit of a broad, a little bit of a broad slice. Since we've got a good way to go down to the lower level. Okay, so what we're going to do here now, is we're going to just carefully, now we're to the bottom, back to small incisions. Just small incisions. Just a little bit of time. Just a little bit of time. And just sort of, with your knife, just sort of go in and up. In and up. Just tilt your wrist upward. It just sort of does it, you know. It just sort of does the trick right for you. Just gets it done. You don't have to do a whole, whole lot. In and up. That's a great technique right there, just for cutting the teeth. Just to get those teeth the right shape. So it works very well, especially for me when I'm carving the lower jaws. Just down and up. Down and up. Now, you can see we're just, just, just about ready here. And if you feel like you have to go over a second time, that's okay. Cut the same incision twice if you think it's, uh, you know, not even, you know, well enough. You just gotta make sure it's Cut right. Okay. So we're almost ready for the to pull out the mouth and have a nice mouthful of fangs revealed. Then we're gonna have a little more fun. A little more fun before we uh, uh put the icing on the cake. We got something else real fun to do. Yeah, actually, yeah, right there. Okay. So we're going to start here now, just little incisions, just like the eyes, little incisions, in and down, in and down. Yeah, yeah. Just like with the eyes and the nose. When you're, oh, whenever you're pulling the part out, you have to cut out just little bits at a time. Sometimes they do like a little zigzag, like a little X pattern. It makes it kind of easy to try to pull out 
part out that you just want to get out of there. Just got to pull that piece out. That one piece just... Got to try to get that... You know, get that out of there. Sometimes try to... From tooth to tooth, too. It's another good method. Try to just cut over where you cut before, too. A little bit at a time. This is probably a little more tedious than uh, the eyes, but it can be done. There is a technique. In this case, you may have to saw a little. And if you can, push it in instead of try to pull it out. Can't stress that enough. That's one of the best techniques. There we go. That side of his mouth coming out. Uh, something to bite you with. <laughs> Boy, he's going to be one badass son of a bitch. Very macabre. Very, very macabre. Uh, now, one thing it definitely you know, want to do. Don't let them outside and then bring them inside. I've done that before. It actually woke up ants. I brought the jack lantern inside while it was burning. Here, I'll just keep it inside. Put in a window. Oh, there were ants everywhere. That's what the vacuum cleaner's for, though. Exactly what the vacuum cleaner's for. And just stuff it in. Stuff it in his mouth. He'll swallow it. Of course, uh, we can always just pull that out afterward. Okay. And with the same thing when we go to this side, just in this case, we can go straight, straight down, straight down to the next tooth. This tooth down diagonally. Yeah. So we're going to try to, as you can see, there's a little bit of a, some excess there. That's okay, though. Remember. It's okay if there's a little bit of a slight flaw in it. No mistakes are being made here. We don't make mistakes here, just we just have happy little abominations. <laughs> Kinda like this whole show is happy little abomination. Okay, now we're gonna just keep now we're gonna just try to get this area here pulled out, like a small area here. You got to sort of do it in layers, just little areas at a time. Not so much layers, but just like a segment. This side and over. It doesn't really come out all at once. It's not exactly the way it's done. You know, some people might try to, you know, pull that out, you know, all at once in one piece and splat. You messed up. No, no, you got to take a little bit of time. It's a technique. Not just something you just jump right into right away. And as you can see, it's a very easy technique. You know, very, 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 you know, fun thing to do, though. Very easy technique and a very fun Halloween hobby. Oh, it ain't Halloween to you carve a jack-o'-lantern. Now, If you carve jack-o'-lanterns, how many do you usually carve? Just one, two? For me, <laughs> there's no limit. I'll carve as many as I possibly can. And we're gonna have some fun with this one too. We're gonna have ourselves a little bit of fun. We're gonna have ourselves some fun getting uh, this one. We're gonna make this a little bit unique. I also like to do something unique. Something that, yo, know, a lot of other people haven't done yet, and gives people some bad inspiration for what they can do. <laughs> Don't you just love when you're a bad influence? <laughs> you know, people see you doing ornery stuff, and then they want to do it. <laughs> just as long as nobody gets hurt, you can be as ornery as you want. As ornery as you want. Kind of what we do here. Be ornery, but no one gets hurt. Okay. Just about have the whole job done, but we're not going to be done right away. No, no. Why well, stop just when we carve the, the face out? Why not go for more? Let's get real creative when we get this part done. 
Oh, this is going to be so fun. Once we put a few extra finishing touches on him. Oh, wow. Beginning to look a little like Skeletor. You know, sometimes I often wondered what the Great Pumpkin looked like. You know, did Charles Schultz actually ever draw a conception sketch of what he would predict he would look like? Because we never actually got to really figure out. Linus never saw him. Does he exist or not? Is Linus crazy? Just such a fun show to watch. Oh, here we go. This is almost ready. This looks just like a skull. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So we're going to get this. Uh, so I get some of the excess sort of push back in there. And remember to just use your hands if necessary. Hands work when necessary. Okay. So, now we've got this just about done. Okay. Now we might want to trim just a little bit off. Or not. It might be right around... Yeah, let's say I'd get some of that back in there. You got a nice thick rind. Yeah, so we're going to have a, a little bit more to go with this one, but the fun part, yeah, it's just about ready to begin. Okay, so nice and scary, isn't he? Well, we're not done yet now. Let's have a little bit of fun here. Now let's really go crazy. Let's go insane. Let's go delirious. Let's make this one all out bullish. So, as you can see, I bought, of course, paper towels, but I also bought an old bottle of some fake blood. Got that Spirit Halloween. Long time ago. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a little bit of fake blood be careful now, because this is a, this big blood is deep. You know, very deep. A little hard to get out. We're going to make him look nice and fierce. Hmm. Hmm, this, this here gourd is a gourd you don't want to mess with. <laughs> you might get eaten alive. So I'm going to pull a little bit of blood, just a little bit of blood, fake blood around the mouth. You have to get a little bit more on there. I'm going to scooch back just a little bit for this. I'm doing getting on my clothes here. But yeah, as you can see, it's not just carving, that's it. It's fun to have fun with them. It's fun to do things like this, you know? To make them a little scarier than usual. You get a nice bloody face there. You know, this is a cannibalistic gourd, perhaps. Well, I wouldn't say cannibalistic, he's not eating his own kind. He's uh, eating something that might actually be human, <laughs> for all we know. Yeah, we're gonna go right ahead here and we're gonna just get him nice and bloody looking. In fact, we might be able to just do a little bit with our finger. Just a little. Yeah. There we go. A little bit on the bottom. A little bit on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, always fun to make your jack o' lanterns look. Barbaric, I mean, really metal looking, isn't it? To make them nice, scary, I mean, make King Diamond proud. <laughs> we'll put a little on the side there. We might need a new napkin though, because that's just getting oh, really, really soggy with fake blood. So, what we're going to get is another one, and we're going to go right ahead, put a little more on. I'm going to try, there, get that on there a little thicker, yeah. I'm gonna smear some blood. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is a this pumpkin is a flesh eater. <laughs> Maybe he uh, ate the guy that tried to break in your house on Halloween night. <laughs> I'll teach you to try to break into a Yinzer's house. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Looks like we're just about done, but you know it needs one extra thing here.
one extra thing. I'm wondering what that could be. I wonder what I could do. What else does this need? Oh, bus killer! What, what? Bus killer! Hey, what, what, what's going on in here? What are you doing? What, what's on your head? Is that an animal? There's like an animal on your hand. Look, look, look. Here, I'll, I'll order it up. Zed, 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 I'm doing a Buzz Rawls impersonation here. Man, it's like Bob Ross, but with Jack Lantern carving. I thought we were going to go out and do stuff tonight. Uh, we are, but first things first. Can I have my banana back? Uh, as a matter of fact, you can. But before you, before you do, I might need this peel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hmm. A... What the hell are you doing? Oh, I'm, oh, I'm peeling it here, man. Yeah, here we go. Come here, Zedge. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Just slap the stupid out of it. And here's your banana peel, and there's what we need. The banana peel. Check that out. Hmm. Or a tongue. Oh, yeah. Now there you go. Now we got ourselves a terrific gourd. Well, let's go ahead and light a tea light. We're just about done. Where is that tea light? <laughs> Must be under here. Ah, there it is. Well, and now we're going to light this thing. And we're going to call it a night. We're going to call it a job well done. Mission accomplished. Let's get that lit up. Oh, this is going to look great on the front porch. There we go. Let's put the lid on it, and we are ready to go. Wow, would you look at that. And just like that, a terrific jack-o'-lantern. Perfect, isn't it? Well, that was very fun. Hope you had a fun time carving along with me. Happy Halloween, and blessed Solomon, my friend.